It's an honor for Diana, Diane and I to be with you today and to talk about the friendship and the common values that the United States of America and Israel share. In my time in Washington and especially my time in the Intelligence Committee, I can tell you that democracy needs to be earned and defended each and every day. We are well aware. We're well aware of the threats that a small country like Israel faces in the Middle East, and I'll go through those uh, in a little bit more detail. But as American citizens who love democracy, who have the opportunity to come out here and express their views, those that agree with this rally and those that disagree, but we can come here in a civil way and have a civil discourse under American law, under American law in the way that we work together as a society. In America, there's another threat, a threat very different to democracy than what the nation state of Israel faces. There are those that believe that other than the U.S. Constitution, there are perhaps other types of laws that ought to be incorporated into the United States legal system. You know what I'm talking about. You know what the threats are. I think as we leave here today, affirming our support for democracy in the Middle East, also reaffirm our support for the Constitution, the rule of law in the United States of America. In America, there is... In America, we live under one set of rules. It's called the Constitution. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. This is where we need to stand. And as long as we defend our con Constitution, America will enable us to live peacefully and to move forward and to maintain our representative government. The threats that Israel faces are very, very different. I've had the opportunity to go meet with our friends and allies in Israel on a number of occasions. You know, if you take a look at the neighborhood, it's not a great neighborhood. The last time I was in Israel, I'm driving, we, we're driving up north, we stop at a couple of communities, and we see the damage that is done by Katusha rockets that have been fired in from Lebanon and Syria. We drive up and we're driving along the border between Israel and Lebanon, and you look out the windshield and you say, what's, what's the sun reflecting up in the sky? Something, I don't know, two, 3,000 feet up in the air. And the driver says, it's a Katusha rocket. It's the way of life in Israel on the northern border. Remember, these rockets, and Israel is a small country, can reach just about every point of Israel, depending on where they shoot it from and what border. You go to Syria. It's the next country over. This is a dictator, a brutal dictator, who has killed, perhaps, the estimates range into the thousands of his own people over the last three to four weeks as those people have been fighting for the same things that Israel, Israelis, and Americans, the privileges that we have. The West Bank and Gaza, areas that need tremendous economic development. But now with the change in the government in Egypt where they've loosened their controls in the Sinai, opened the borders to Gaza, it's opened the way now for what we saw within the last few weeks of people coming across the border, brutally murdering eight people and injuring 30 others. You've got the new threat from Israel where the government, the new military government, is maybe more concerned about maintaining its own power than continuing peace with Israel. You go over a couple of other countries and you have Iran where the leadership of that country is committed to the annihilation and the destruction and the elimination of Israel. That is the neighborhood. Israel is our ally, they are our friends, and they are because we have shared values for civil liberties, a respect for human dignity, and democracy. We all hope 
And that is why we stand with the people of Israel. It is also why I hope that America stands with the people in Lebanon, the people in Syria, the people in Egypt, the people in Libya, and the people in Iran and across the Middle East who want the same things that we have. And what a blessing it will be when the neighborhood that Israel lives in reflects the values of America and Israel rather than the dictatorships and the oppression that it has today. That is the vision that I think we all share. That we can stand and be united across the Middle East because we all have a shared value. But today we stand with Israel because of its commitment. Sure, its commitment to the United States and your reward and you recognize your friendship but more importantly, we stand with Israel because of its commitment to its people. When its people go out and protest like they did in the last couple of last last month, 250,000 people protesting across the state of Israel, protesting economic conditions, protesting high rents. The response of the government was not to put snipers on top of buildings and take out the leaders of the protests. The, the, the response of the Prime Minister was not to say, I'm going to destroy and burn this country down, like Muammar Gaddafi said in Libya. They didn't send the military out and start killing their citizens because they were protesting like they have in Syria, in Libya, in Egypt, in Iran. They respected the dignity of their citizens. They said it's a free society. This is how democracy works. It is hard. It is difficult. But by allowing this open discussion and doing it in a civil way, it's what makes Israel strong. It's what makes America strong. That's why I stand here today. I stand with you, united for the principles and the concepts and the freedoms that we as enjoy as Americans and Israelis and that is the bond that brings us together because we recognize that in a very complex and dangerous world what brings us together is a whole lot more important and a lot stronger than what may separate us on any given day. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Israel, and thank you for supporting the principles that make us great. Thank you.